How do you all everyone? I um, hope you are having a good day today. Thank you for tuning into this video. I just wanted to sit down and uh, speak on some ways to deepen one's spiritual spirituality, spiritual practice, um, which I refer to as sadhana, this means spiritual practice, um, yogic terms in Sanskrit, but um, this is, I don't know, I just wanted to sit down and talk about this real quick just because I actually have people who will message me on Instagram and ask me about my practices and I just thought I'd explain it a little bit, like really quick. This is really just about moving your spirituality and whatever practices that you're trying to like build but maybe it's sourced off of just like online information. Moving your spirituality from an aesthetic into this daily like disciplined practice that can actually help you connect to spirit. And of course, one of the biggest tips is just like being out in nature, observing nature, meditating in nature. But when you don't necessarily have time, access, or whatever, to just being able to sit outside, like I don't necessarily, or like have a yard, or it's rainy, or whatever reason, if you just want to be indoors, um, there are ways to practice to deepen your spiritual practice and connect to spirit. And then, really, is. It comes down to yoga, honestly, because I feel like outside of, say, Wicca, witchcraft, with they have their own practices and rituals and everything like that, which is really cool. Um, I want to say that things that people, when, when kundalini chakras, um, anything of actual santana dharmic, like yogic practices are mentioned, it's basically just yoga, like you're just wanting to deepen your yoga practice. So I'm just going to list a few ways to deepen your spiritual practice and you know, kind of like look, give a little bit of a why. Um, it's basically things that I do that deepen my sadhanas on a day-to-day -day basis. And not saying I do these things every single day, but they're different things that can help for different reasons, whatever feels, whatever feels the best in a certain moment. I like to kirtan. I love practicing japa yoga, yoga nidra, pranayama, um, and jnana yoga. And I'm actually learning a little bit of bhakti yoga. So kind of like six things. Um, jnana yoga, japa yoga, and bhakti yoga are different branches of yoga, separate from raja yoga. I would say actively my sadhana is in raja yoga just because of integral yoga and it's almost like the practices they teach in their lineage is straight from the yoga sutras it's like that guideline so reading the yoga sutras of Patanjali is a form of nana yoga but also a practice and understanding the eight limbs and stuff like that that yogic philosophy that can serve to be reflective on our actions in our day-to-day -day life can help to deepen one's spirituality as it's more than just sitting on the mat, doing a practice, meditating, and then going and just doing whatever, but it's watching how the practices can shapeshift your mind and your reactions and the way that you approach the world off the mat, which is what's really important too. Yeah, Jnana Yoga, which is basically like self-study, spiritual contemplation, reading ancient um, spiritual texts, and things like that to deepen your practice. Really good way to just kind of, you know, get into a contemplative state and understand yourself more. Um, I actually have a video recommending books to read to deepen that knowledge, and they are like pretty spiritual books. Um, I'll make an updated one because I have, I feel like I have more books to add to that list now, but um, I'll link that video in the description box below if you're curious about books to read to deepen your spirituality or spiritual practices. Um, the other thing I really love to do is kirtan. I love to kirtan when, I, when I'm having a hard time wanting to get onto the mat to even just begin my uh, sadhana. Like kirtaning can help bring all those racy thoughts into this just uplifted, uh, uplifted thought form with mantras, mantras, mind tool with um, where each mantra has its own meaning and vibration and power that can just overpower whatever's going on in the mind. It almost brings me out of my head but into mantra, I guess? I don't know how to explain it. I personally do my kirtans on Interway Yoga TV's website, subscription-based, but I, I, there might be kirtans on YouTube. I'm pretty sure there are, 
um, somewhere. Just have to like dig them up and um, there are different kinds of kirtans, different mantras, different things to chant. One I would recommend would be the Gaia 3 mantra, looking up a kirtan for Gaia 3 or like a uh, Ganesh mantras, Om Gan Ganam Pateya Namaha. It's another popular like kind of war known mantra and Om Namashivai as well. It's good kirtans to start with. Even just Om, even just saying Om over and over again. It will just bring you into this deep, balanced state. So mantras are a powerful tool to use, which brings me into Japa Yoga, which is using mantras and a mala necklace that has 108 beads to, you know, repeat mantra with the bead following the necklace. And I find this helps so much getting into a meditative state just because of how you have to focus on like moving the bead with the mantra so even if your mind deviates for a second you're like next beat oh and you go back which is like the perfect concentration practice to get into meditation and then pranayama which is breath work there are different breath practices to activate the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system and bring your mind about into balance and to strengthen your lungs like it's so good for your lung capacity in general, but also to calm the mind because when we're breathing pretty shallowly, like breathing really shallow, our mind tends to be agitated as well. And when you can bring about a depth into the abdomen, which does signal to the brain that parasympathetic nervous system to like call, cool the mind and slow it down, it can be a good way to balance the mind. Doing pranayama is good after a uh, physical yoga practice, you bring it to the subtle practices. Um, another good subtle practice is yoga nidra, which is yogic sleep or deep relaxation. You're not actually going to sleep, your body's going to sleep, but your mind is conscious and it moves you through the koshas, which is just the energetic bodies outside of the physical body. Um, it is a powerful way, honestly, for me to for me personally, and from what I've experienced with other people teaching yoga nidra, it's a powerful way to release tension. It's just a powerful practice. There is a yoga nidra video Integral Yoga has uploaded, but there are other yoga nidra videos out there. The one specific practice that I teach is tense and releasing, where you squeeze and stretch every part of your body, and then you completely relax it, and like forget about it. You do it through the whole body, and then you just lay there relaxed with the tension released and you know moving into the mind and then moving into the like spirit basically um it's a good way to connect with spirit too it's it's a pretty it can be intense but it's actually very uh just powerful too i recommend the yoga nature practice if not every day you know maybe like once a week or a few times a week if you want to deep dive and do some research into that but i'll leave my resources below that i find on these practices and then I want to say one last tip on deepening your spirituality or practices is there is nothing wrong with having a guru or a guide, someone who has already lived and embodied the wisdom and experiences to just share with the world, like to have this access and then to just kind of, I feel like, I feel like it can almost be prideful to be like, oh, I don't need a guru or whatever. Like there's nothing wrong with looking up to someone who has lived experiences and they can answer questions that you might have thought of a while back and they can help bring clarity about certain things. Like I know Swamiji has done so much for me just listening to his sat songs, reading his books and you know, embodying his, you know, this lineage of uh, yoga. It's just been, it's just been so clarifying and simplifying. Like it doesn't overcomplicate the spiritual practice because I feel like looking to information online can almost complicate spirituality, you know, making it this whole aesthetic and stuff, but this is about actually connecting to spirit and remembering the deep, um, just ancient wisdom that lives within, but also having that guide externally can help bring about the same realizations as well. Just little things, I'm not even little things, but there are like full practices out there that with discipline can just bring about the deepest spiritual insight, wisdom, realizations, and freedom, liberation, non-attachment from 
things that hold us back and keep our mind hostage from feeling the peace within. Why wouldn't one take advantage of all of these practices? There's literally no harm in them. I just know that from my point of, from my experiences before I even learned about all of these things, I just felt stuck in spirituality and not knowing what to think and what to practice and what to harness and like where to start because there's so many concepts and a lot of information and I honestly do find that people talk a lot about things that don't actually have much to do with spirituality but it's almost like everyone online is trying to be your therapist. I feel like is how it feels, but like therapy is great. That's like a separate thing and it can be super healing, but having these physical practices can also be another way to move through tension in the body, tension where trauma triggers that squeeze of muscle in the body to help relax. And the balance of the nervous system is another big way to also just heal yourself inside and out. Even if you're not reflecting on every single emotion or trigger, which you don't necessarily have to do because we are still human, we're going to feel emotions and that's just going to be what it is. We don't have to put a label on everything. These practices are just like, honestly, like fun, stimulating ways to get in touch with your inner self and actually go inward, like actually feel the warmth and the light that lives within. I just want to sit down and kind of like talk about this a little bit because it's been on my mind for a while and there's just so, so much out there that it can be overwhelming as well to where you don't even just like, for at least for me, like there's so much that I would just stop making progress. Like I was like, or not even progress, but just didn't know what I was doing basically. And yoga, it's the practice of of the whole, not just the physical practice, but the different practices stemming from yoga that bring you into that one-pointed state of mind, into meditation, into balance, into healing your subconscious mind and everything within. It's just a powerful way to deepen your spirituality and your spiritual practices. And I just wanted to come on here and mention all of that. And I will link resources in the description box below to further research if you find interest in it and I just wanted to come and talk about this kind of uh, real quick and if it resonates, if it makes sense, if you have any thoughts, anything you want to contribute or questions, you can leave them in the comment below. I thank you for watching me sit down and just talk about these things that have been on my mind and if they resonate, you know, I'm glad they do and I will see you guys in my next vlog. Thank you for tuning in. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.